Whenever a major blockbuster film gets released, it's not uncommon for one, or in this case, many ripoffs that are of significantly less quality to follow it. Long before the PS2 CGI days of Asylum and Sci-Fi Channel, popular American films were being ripped off left and right. A good chunk of these knockoffs tended to be Italian, and few other Italian directors were as prolific when it came to shameless knockoffs as this guy here. Mr. Bruno Mattei. Which brings us to today's film, which is probably one of Mr. Mattei's most notorious films, and that is, of course, Cruel Jaws. And aw, isn't that cute? This movie is trying to trick us into thinking it's a part of a popular American franchise. The original Jaws is an absolute masterpiece, and I consider it a staple from my childhood. I quite enjoy the second film as well, although it is nowhere near as good as the first, and was definitely a very unnecessary sequel. The third film is pretty much just a big old snooze fest with some really hokey effects and is just a very dull film at the end of the day. Jaws the Revenge, while unintentionally hilarious due to some of the effects and also Michael Caine just being Michael Caine, is still a pretty awful movie. But believe me when I say this, this film makes Jaws 4 look like a freaking masterpiece. The film opens up with a sequence that's basically a ripoff of the opening of Jaws 2, where the two divers discover the wreck of the orca from the previous film and are attacked by a shark off camera. Only this time, it's done in hilarious low-budget fashion. Also, this film was released in 1995, but if you didn't know any different, you'd probably assume it was from the 70s due to the shitty, pixely quality of the camera they use. Also, the shark in this film is supposed to be a tiger shark, but you can clearly tell, plain as day, that it's a great white. Hell, they even use stock footage that looks like it was ripped straight off of Discovery Channel, as well as several shots that were ripped directly from Jaws and Jaws 2, as well as Great White, aka The Last Shark, which is another ripoff that steals footage from Jaws as well. So in a way, the movie's basically a ripoff of a ripoff. The shark effects, of course, look like absolute ass, and the shots that aren't footage taken from another film or stock footage look like a literal toy that the director probably gave to his son after he was done filming this movie. Well, after seeing the two divers meet such a horrible fate, I can only imagine what's going to happen to the poor captain in his boat. Oh, wait, okay, never mind. I guess we're never going to find out, because it immediately jumps to the next scene. So apparently this movie is directed by one William Snyder, but... Newsflash, this is actually just a pseudoname that Bruno Matai uses for some of his films. So I guess then you could call this the Snyder Cut. What? You guys know me. I have to make at least one shitty pun per review. Here we meet Billy and Vanessa, who are on their way to Hampton Bay to visit the Sorosin Aquarium. Here we get to meet some more characters, including little Susie here, a character that the film constantly likes to remind us of the fact that she is indeed disabled and cannot walk. We also have a Hulk Hogan look-alike. The character's name is actually Doug, but I'm just going to refer to him as Hulk Hogan this entire video because, well, I mean, it's pretty fucking obvious. Doug is the owner of this aquarium and is coping with the death of his wife and now on top of that has to deal with the possibility of his aquarium being shut down. So just a fair warning here folks, this is going to be a shorter and more condensed video than most of the reviews that I typically do just because I don't really feel like dedicating any more of my time than is absolutely necessary talking about this corroded piece of garbage here. I'm sorry, this isn't a social call. I have an order to evict from Sammy Lewis. We've got to be out of here in 30 days. I'm really sorry. Yeah, well, you've always been a good friend, Sheriff. And besides, 30 days is a long time. A lot of things can happen. And you know, good for you, Doug. It always helps to be positive about a situation, no matter how crazy it is. Hey, Billy! How you doing, Sheriff? Is it just me, or does it look like Billy could pass as Matt Damon's long-lost twin? 
Now, you may have noticed at this point that this film is pretty light on the shark action so far. Well, that's because the director, for some reason, seems to feel that we would rather watch characters dance for 90 minutes than see a film that's supposed to be about a fucking shark. You know, like the poster advertised it as. And, I mean, parts of this film honestly feel like they were intended to be some type of softcore porno. Although they're not as gratuitous or as explicit as certain other shark movies. person in charge of pussy. I have to, you know, <laughs> check your credentials. <laughs> dick brain, dick brain, dick brain. I don't even know where to start with this one. That cringy pickup line, the random shot of Ronnie, or the girls yelling dick brain. Of course, no Jaws clone is complete without an annual event for the shark to crash. So we get a regatta that is ran by this rich sleazebag, Sam Lewis. No, not Sam Lou Miss, Sam Lewis. I honestly don't understand what he is. He's not the mayor or any sort of politician. At least, the film never establishes this at any point. Yet, he somehow has the power and authority to override the sheriff's decision to shut down the beaches. In spite of this, the mayor and Mr. Lewis do allow the sheriff to put out patrol boats in order to keep the regatta safe. Although I think they're pretty safe because judging by this footage here, the shark is on the opposite side of the planet right now. One thing this film does that I have to admit I did find interesting was incorporating the subplot from the Jaws novel that in the book involves Mayor Vaughn being under pressure by the Mafia to keep the beaches open and making some not-so-subtle threats towards him and his family. Basically, if you just swapped the Mayor Vaughn character from Jaws with Sam Lewis here, that's basically the gist of this subplot because it doesn't really go anywhere. So, just like in Jaws, our leads decide to embark on a journey to kill the beast using their boat and a shotgun. Amazing how they managed to get such a high-angle view of the shark from the boat like this. So Ronnie just starts firing off the shotgun into the water, and not surprisingly, it doesn't do jack shit. Ah, right well, I think we all know who the worst acting award for this film is going to. And this next part is just downright jarring. So the shark bumps the boat, but then it just stops mid-swim to hover below the boat. I guess maybe to keep the boat from moving? But it just sits there for a full 10 seconds while the propeller shreds its back then finally swims off. So our characters throw some meat into the water to lure the shark to the surface, and then it turns into a stock footage shark. During all this commotion, Ronnie gets knocked into the water, and the girl who can't act to save her life decides the best way to help him is by pouring gasoline on herself and the boat. And then one of the dudes shoots a flare gun, which of course catches the boat on fire, blowing them all to smithereens. Jaws too much? During all of this, the B-plot wraps itself up when the Mafia dudes set out on their own quest to kill the shark, and in turn get devoured. Actually, I just think the shark was more angry at this guy's taste in clothing. So, the characters deduce that the shark must live inside of the wrecked ship we saw at the start of the film, and they rig the entire ship to explode. One of the guys is attacked by the shark and swims frantically towards the surface, and the bomb is detonated just in the nick of time, in a shot that I'm pretty sure was ripped straight from Great White. Oh, and we also get a random shot of an octopus that I just had to include because, well, you know, octopuses are cool. So that was Jaws 5, Cruel Jaws, or just Cruel Jaws, I guess, and I mean, it... Barely passes as a movie, but I suppose you could call it a movie. I mean, what the hell can I even say about this thing? It's one of the cheapest and laziest pieces of film I think I've ever laid eyes on. It manages to be both stupidly entertaining and also extremely dull and boring at the same time. The movie has its entertaining moments, but the whole middle portion just drags and... The whole subplot involving the Mafia really could have been cut from the film, which 
It understandably got cut from the film adaptation for Jaws, which is where it was taken from, so go figure. Besides trying to pick out which movie the stock footage they took was from, one of the most entertaining parts of this film is by far the ridiculous over-the-top acting. I already mentioned the dick brain sequence, which had me in stitches, but every single line that is said by Billy's actor is just so unintentionally funny, as his delivery is not only super over the top, but he for some reason feels the need to constantly yell every single one of his lines. Of course, I can't entirely blame him for this, as most of the actors in this film seem like they were dubbed, which would make sense considering this was a foreign film. Well, at least Cruel Jaws taught us all a very good lesson, and that is that if you know ahead of time that your film is going to suck ass, just go ahead and shoehorn it into another franchise and call it a sequel. Anyway, thank you all for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Let me hear from you. I'm going to post a link in the description below to the Patreon where you'll find all kinds of fun stuff, including exclusive content that is only found on Patreon. Feel free to donate. I try to keep it as reasonable as possible. It's a great way to help support the channel and allow me to post more content here on YouTube. And until then, ciao for now, guys.